All right, Shalom, first and foremost, I'm going to give all praises to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Bakakadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace, love, and salutation to all you Akim that's pushing this truth and truth sincerity. I title this lesson, Where in the Hell is Good Friday at in the Bible? And as you can see, when you go to the Blue Letter Bible, let me type it in. Let's type up Good Friday. Now, so-called Good Friday is on what? Uh, Friday uh, the 7th of April. And then you have this Easter two days afterwards, which makes no sense. You're going to start to see uh, at your church, you're going to see, I mean, at, at our church, you're going to see at these churches, especially down here in the south, you're going to see three crosses. You're going to see and one with a purple color, a uh, scarlet purple one. All right. And the Christian church. So I typed the Good Friday once again, and there's no, uh, <laughs> there's no record of Good Friday in the Bible. All right. <laughs> so let me get this scripture, man. You know, for you simple Christians out there, you know, Vocab Malone, he probably celebrating this crap Good Friday, and all you other uh, self-proclaimed, self-righteous Christians that try to come after the Hebrew Israelites. We're simply giving you the truth of the Bible. All right. You know, these Christians try to act holier than now on Good Friday. They gave me the day off. All right, I'm about to go hiking on that day. I'm not about to sit here and observe any of this crap because we know better. All right. Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it, it is because there is no light in them. All right. And there's no there's no Good Friday in the Bible. So you're, they're making this stuff up. And this is made up. By the Christian church, of course. All right. Uh, Good Friday is a Christian holiday commemorating the crucifixion of Jesus. We know the letter J did not come around to the 1520s. And our Lord sprang out of the tribe of Judah, which were Hebrew Israelites. And Hebrew Israelites spoke Hebrew. So there's no Jesus. All right. This whole Jesus deception is messing with you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Because you're going to have some simple-minded Negro or Hispanic Especially you Mexicans, man, trying to celebrate this Good Friday. It says Good Friday is a Christian holiday commemorating the crucifixion of Jebus at his death at Calvary. It is observed during Holy Week. Now, I was talking to a brother and he was relaying a message to me today saying that people were telling him a good Holy Week. Holy means separated. All right. You people aren't separated from this world. You carry uh, traditions like Good Friday. You know, Good Friday, I remember back in high school, people would, they would stay away from red meat. They would eat fish. They would serve fish on these Good Fridays during high school. And they would go back to doing the same folly that they did during uh, the previous week on that following Monday. It said it is observed during Holy Week as part of the Paschal Tridum. Now, Paschal is in the Bible. We're going to get into that. But... Let me continue. It is also known as Holy Friday. And there's no Friday in the Bible. They didn't the one who you ignorantly called Jesus Christ didn't go about Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, man. That's how simple these Christians are. Great Friday, Great and Holy Friday, and Holy and Great Friday and Black Friday. These people are gonna be at the club on Saturday and they're gonna be back to the club after that Sunday. And you, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are going to be at the church with the funny colored suits thinking that uh, bunnies lay eggs. Members of many Christian denominations, including the Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, uh, Lutheran, Angelican, Methodist, Oriental Orthodox. Wh where, is that, where is this at in the Bible? The Bible talks about nationality. The Bible talks about the Hebrew Israelites, your nationality. And the scriptures say that we would discontinue for our, from our heritage. A lot of our people are into this stuff you can't even pronounce. Angelican, Methodist, <clears throat> Oriental Orthodox. What the hell is an Oriental Orthodox? Let me just look it up. The Oriental Orthodox churches are Eastern churches, Eastern Christian, Eastern Christian churches adhering to Maya Phisite Christology. Where in the hell is that in the Bible, man? I can't even pronounce half this stuff. With approximately 60 million members worldwide. So it's 60 million simple minded people that are into this. The Oriental Orthodox Church are part of the Nicene Christian tradition 
and represent one of its oldest branches. United Protestant and some Reformed traditions, including certain Continental Reformed, Presbyterian, and con Congregationalist, Congregationalist churches, observe Good Friday with fasting and church services. I bet you none of these people party fast, man. They just give you that fish platter and that's it. I don't see a Christian fasting for anything. In many Catholic, Lutheran, Angelican, and Methodist churches, the service of the great three hours of agony is held from noon to 3 p.m. The time process during the time duration that the Bible records as darkness covering the land to Jebus' sacrificial death from the cross. Now we know that Yahweh suffered the death on the cross for the nation of Israel, and our Lord don't look like this pale devil right here, man. Looking like Prince, or looking like a light skinned uh, Prince. They got the Lord and Savior looking like a, a Sodomite, man. Our Lord and Savior don't look like that, man. You can read Revelation, the first chapter. All right. Our Lord has white, woolly hair, man. All right. He has, he had uh, white, woolly hair. All right. As a matter of fact, I'm going to just get it right quick. I don't want to misquote it. That That is a misreputation of our Lord. They're making our Lord look like. Like he's some type of punk. Just keeping it straight up, man. The scriptures say our Lord was an austere man. He didn't look like a little simple Edomite, all right, who has no might. When you look at these Edomites, man, they're weak. Revelation 1 and um, 13. And if you celebrating Good Friday, man, you still simple as all hell, man. Like, and then these, these are the same Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans we got the Bible on the dashboard on or the back of the console of their car. Talking about, yeah, I know I know God. I know the Bible. But you're celebrating Good Friday. All right. Like I said, I got a day off. I'm going to go hiking. You know what I'm saying? Go get some food. A brother might come with me. We're not, we're not celebrating no goddamn Good Friday, man. When you go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, there's no Good Friday in the high holy days. All right. And even going towards the New Testament, you don't see the apostle... Peter and Apostle Paul celebrate Good Friday. When when Apostle Paul says, I must keep the feast, he's talking about the Passover. All right, and you so-called Jews, you Amalekites, you have no right to celebrate the Passover. That's for Israelites, not Amalekites. So let's get back to this. Revelation 1 and 13, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, that's talking about the Lord, clothed with a garment down to the foot, all right, you know, Esau tries to paint these pictures of uh, Israelites being half naked, like that that blasphemous picture of King David. They make King David look like a, a leprous Edomite, and he was half naked. What is that, Michelangelo's painting? Michelangelo was a sodomite, all right? Esau got a lot to pay, man, for this blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. It says, clothed with their garment down to the foot and girt about the past with a golden girdle his head and his hairs are white like wool this devil right here does not fit the description all right it says his head and his hairs are white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were a, as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass does this devil look like his feet is unto fine brass he's pale as all hell man all right and, and, you know, when Yahweh Shai gave up the spirit, you didn't have these weird-looking characters right here, man. All right? What the hell is this? What what the hell is this, man? This is just common sense when you read the scriptures, man. This, ain't, this lesson ain't deep. It's just common sense, man. A lot of you Israelites who are into Catholicism and this Angelican, Methodist, Eastern Orthodox, don't, don't even freaking read, man. All right? It's about common sense. When you have the Holy Spirit... You have a matter of common sense. You're able to divide logic. It says in his feet like unto fine brass if it, as if they burn in a furnace. If you burn brass, it's going to turn dark brown. So our Lord and Savior had white woolly hair and he had dark brown skin, man. All right, he'd be considered a so-called black man in this time period of age because he's from the tribe of Judah. As if they burn in a furnace, his voice and the sound of many waters. This devil right here, don't look like he, he had a loud voice. He probably sounded like the uh, musician known as Prince. Eh, eh, like that. All 
right, so continuing on, it says, um, communicants of the Mor Moravian church. There's so many denominations, man. What's wrong with you Christians, man? You're always trying to get on us. You got about 15 denominations in this first paragraph alone of Christianity and Catholicism. It says Moravian church have a good Friday tradition of cleaning gravestones in Moravian cemeteries. Where is that in the Bible? Where is that cleaning gravestones at in the Bible? The date of Good Friday varies from one year to the next in both the Gregorian and Julian calendars. All right. And these calendars are way off. The Gregorian and Julian calendar. Right. The Gregorian calendar is the calendar used in most parts of the world. It was introduced on February 24th with a papal bull and went to effect in October 1582 by Pope Gregory VIII as a modification when it comes to the most high and counting time there's no modifications or amendments man Esau it said like it says in what Daniel he changed the times and laws so he went from the uh, Gregorian calendar now we're under the Julian calendar and the whole time is messed up we can still we can be in 1999 for all we know speaking of Prince he had that song 1999 we can be in 1999 2000 like Juvenile said <laughs> We could be in 1999, 2000, because this devil was jacked up the the time, man. We don't know if we're in 2023, man. See, this is the things that you Christians don't read about, man. And replacement for the Julian calendar, all right? Let's get this. The Julian calendar is a solar calendar of 365 days in every year, but they have a leap year, so they're adding to time. Man, we don't know what time period we're in with this devil. And every year with an additional leap year every fourth year, the Julian calendar is still used in parts of Eastern Orthodox Church and in parts of Oriental Orthodoxy as well as the as well by the Berbers. Right? So the date of Good Friday varies from one year to the next in both Gregorian and Julian calendars. Eastern and Western Christian disagree over the computation of the date of Easter. And therefore, of Good Friday. Good Friday is a widely instituted legal holiday around the world, including in most Western countries and in 12 U.S. states. I bet Georgia's probably one of them. Let me see. Uh, it doesn't really say. Some predominantly Christian count, uh, countries, such as Germany, have laws prohibiting certain acts as dancing and horse riding. And remembrance of the somber nature of Good Friday. So that's where you get this Good Friday from. All right. This nonsense that's not in the Bible. All right. We already got the description of Yahweh Shai. Let's let's get it. Let's get another example of why Good Friday is not in the Bible. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Let's just scroll down. All right. These are the high holy days. All right. You have the Sabbath, which we're in right now. All right. You don't see Good Friday. We just set, we just we not we commemorate the Passover on what March the fifth at sundown. You Christians don't keep the Lord's Passover, man. And if you did, you wouldn't know what the hell you're doing anyways. You had the Feast of Eleven Bread. All right, you don't see Good Friday nowhere. All right, then you have uh, Pentecost after that. All right, you don't see any Good Friday. All right. All right, you have the Pentecost, which is, uh, it says, uh, Leviticus 23 and 16, even until the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall you number 50 days and you shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. That's talking about the Pentecost, right? So then you have the uh, memorial, you have the uh, memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. That's, I believe that's in the seventh month. No, no, no mention of Good Friday. All right, Day of Atonement, where you afflict your soul, you fast for a period of, you don't eat or drink for 24 hours. You don't see anything about Good Friday. All right. Feast of Tabernacles, you still don't see anything about Good Friday in the Bible. Did the Israelites back in Moses' time celebrate Good Friday? No. All right. So that's it. No Good Friday, man. All right, let's go to Colossians chapter 2. And verse 8, beware lest any man spoil you through vain through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men. Good Friday is a tradition of man. All right? There's nowhere in the scriptures where the Lord said, Thus saith the Lord, we shall celebrate Good Friday. That that doesn't make any sense, man. 
like I said, when you come into this truth, man, common sense starts to work. Good Friday is just a made up holiday by Catholics and Christians, man. They don't know what the hell is going on. They can't even tell you about prophecy. So why would you trust somebody about Good Friday, man? Like I said, I'll take the day off. I'm glad. I got one more day. Today is what so-called Wednesday. I got one more day and I'm happy as all hell. I'll, I'll take it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure as hell not going to be telling Jake at the job, yo, you know, Good Friday is not in the Bible. Let him have it. You know what I'm saying? This is for the elect. Like Elder Hawaii says, these, these lessons are for the elect of the nation of Israel, man. Right? Uh, Colossians 2 and 6, as you have received, as you have therefore received Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, the Lord, not Jesus the Christ, as IUIC says, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai the Lord, so walk you in him. So if you're walking in the Lord, right? You know, you people say, what would Jesus do? Well, what would Yahweh Shai do? He didn't have, there was no such thing as Good Friday. All right, let's, let's say for the sake of the argument, okay, after Yahweh Shai went on the cross for the elect of the nation of Israel. Let's get that understood because there's many scriptures that point to salvations for Israel and Yahweh Shai laying down his life for the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. Now, like I said earlier, did you see Barnabas and Paul and Peter and John the Revelator and, and, and Titus celebrate Good Friday? No. All right. Colossians 2 and 7, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. This truth is about abounding. All right. Moving forward, you're moving backwards when, you, in, when you're in Catholicism and Christianity. Verse 8, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After Salakia. I didn't pick up my Wi-Fi, Salakia. I hope we're still on. Beware lest any man spoil you through vain philosophy and excuse me, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Hamashiach. Right? And now I'm gonna get into this one scripture. I want to get now you do see Easter in the Bible well we're going to get into that because these people are going to go on these people are going to go to church with these bright yellow suits on or, or neon Dion Sander uh, orange uh, suits yellow suits all types of weird looking Steve Harvey suits they got a DNK to celebrate Easter I already heard the black woman talking about yeah I got to boil these eggs for my kid in this Easter egg hunt where the hell is Easter egg hunt and bunnies lay eggs in the Bible? That goes back to heathen customs, man, like Ishchar, Astarte, these different foreign gods that we were not supposed to worship, man. So you're giving reverence to other gods when you celebrate Easter. Now let's get this definition of Easter in the Bible and break down what it really is. Acts 12 and 1. Now about that time, Herod, the king, stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And you had a lot of wicked Jews who didn't agree with Yahweh Shai, man. They're here back today saying, Most High and Christ bless, and we don't, we don't know the Lord's name. Hint, hint. Then were the days of unleavened bread. You don't, you don't see anywhere a Good Friday. There, it was during the time of the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We don't eat leavened bread. You don't eat a Subway sandwich during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. A lot of you Israelite camps, shame on you, man. Like one body and Satan, they had a Passover years ago where they had people drinking straight up beers and eating bread during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And they had women at the Passover, man. The Passover is a solemn assembly. Passover is not a fashion show. The Passover is not a, a concert, all right? It's not a lamb dinner. Like Apostle Har says, man. Right? And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. And this is one of my favorite chapters, by the way, because it's an example of deliverance. And we come into that time of persecution, man. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. See, they'd be like, oh, see, that's, that's Easter's in the Bible. What are you Hebrew Israelites talking about? Well, you need to look up the words, man. Now that word Easter, let's get it, and we're gonna close it on out. This is the Greek 
Strong's G, 3957. Pascha. 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 So it says the Pascha sacrifice, which was a custom to be offered for the people deliverance of old from Egypt. The Paschal lamb, i.e. the lamb the Israelites were accustomed to slay and eat on the 14th day of the month Nisan, the first month of their year. Because, hey, look, man, the, the, the first of the year is not the dead of the winter, man. That doesn't make any sense at all. In memory of the day of which their fathers preparing to depart from Egypt were bidden by the Most High to slay and eat a lamb and, and sprinkle their doorposts with his blood that the destroying angel, the destroying angel is Yahweh Shai. And ain't no destroying angel looking like this little soft boy right here, all right? The angels are dark-skinned men, but Yahweh Shai was that death angel that came through, all right, during the time of Egypt. He didn't look like this little frail-looking white boy right here, man, all right? <clears throat> Let's continue on. It says, in memory of the day on which their fathers preparing to depart from Egypt were bidden by the Most High to slay and eat a lamb and to sprinkle their doorposts with his blood that the destroying angel, seeing the blood, might pass over their dwellings. <clears throat> Yahweh Shai crucified his liken to the slain Paschal lamb. All right, so let's go on into the Passover. The Paschal feast, the feast of the Passover, extending from the 14th to the 20th day of the month Nisan. So it's not talking about bunnies laying eggs and you going to the church with a bright uh a bright uh neon Deion Sanders suit on man so I'm gonna just end off on that man you know there's no good Friday in the Bible and if you're celebrating that man you need to come back to your nationality if you're a so-called Negro Latino Native American man and get out of those traditions of men so with that I want to say shalom